What's up everybody, Tendo here, and welcome to another thrift haul video. This thrift haul video is gonna be a little different, okay? And it's gonna be different because normally my thrift haul videos, I pick one day a week, I take a camera with me, I go film myself shopping, and that's how I put these videos together. That's definitely the case for the last one. Go check out my last thrift haul video, you'll see. Well, this one I did something a little different. What happened was I was realizing that despite setting this day aside each week and going and shopping them, I was still going to a lot of game shops and thrift shops, etc., on the days that I wasn't filming. So what I did this week is no matter what, if I left the house, I took my camera with me, and if I just so happened to go shopping, I turned the camera on. So that's what this is. This is a full week of thrift hauls, of game hauls. So check it out. There was a day earlier in the week when Hannah got off work and we immediately jumped in the car and went to a few thrift stores. We started with Desert Industries. And this is a thrift store that I've been to several times in my videos just because it's the closest of the three deserts in Phoenix. And uh, it's, it's really the least best of the three, mostly because everything that is good that comes in, they kind of just pile it in this lockbox. It's hard to see all of it. And sometimes it's hard to get an employee to let you check it out. But as you can see, there's a few systems in here. There's a 360 Slim, a Wii, vastly overpriced compared to what I normally pay for them. I don't think I've bought a system from here yet, usually just because they're priced too high. They don't put all their games in the lockbox, though. And this time I came in, everything was organized kind of different. Normally, two whole rolls of these shelves that you just saw are games. And this time, only half of one of them is. And there's just not much there. I don't know if they got rid of some stuff or somebody came in and wiped them out but it's not a whole lot here star wars what else what else <laughs> the playstation blu-ray uh i'm not really sure what's on that disc does do some of the playstation 4s come with a fancy blu-ray just to show you what the playstation 4 does i see those all the time but of course i've never bought one copy of tekken Yeah, all these games are just piled in there. Really had to dig for them. Nothing wrong with that, though. Adds an extra level of excitement. Trivia game. Ended up buying that one, I think. It's one I didn't have. And this one I got super excited for. And I did not notice in that shot there, there was a football game inside of that fighting game case. Too big of a hurry. I didn't end up buying it though, I ended up catching the mistake before I left. Computer games, Golden Compass, it's all there. Set that one aside. Here I go checking them out. And uh, this is where I realized, boom, NFL Street inside of the King of Fighters. Which was really a bummer because this is probably one of the most uncommon games I've found lately. I was very excited and I knew it was uncommon when I found it. Uh, you know, it's not a super expensive game, not a super rare game, but definitely uncommon. It was also in a Hollywood video case, an aftermarket case that the video rental place put it in with a, their own custom label. So it wasn't that great to begin with, but it was still, still an alright find. Here I am looking through the electronics. Whole lot of Skylander gates. Here's a plug and play, a Pac-Man plug and play, an infinity scanner. Just kind of bare bones over here as well. Probably just the wrong day of the week to come. But here's all the outdoor stuff. I usually just check the bags to make sure there's nothing gaming related. <laughs> and then I saw this St. Louis Rams toolbox. I'm not much of a sports person, so that's not why it caught my eye. It was more so uh, I have a lot of business that I conduct in St. Louis, so I spent a lot of time there. And I just remember when they announced that St. Louis Rams were moving to Los Angeles. And I remember all of my colleagues in St. Louis losing their minds over it. A drill press, it was a nice one, better than the one I have. I would have loved to have had it, but the price was very high. So here's what I left with, Tekken, Golden Compass. Not the best find, not the worst find. The next desert, this one is so far away. I think it's about a 30 minute drive from that last desert. They're not close at all. Take a walk to the back of the store. Lots of nice clothes here. As some of you might know who have seen my earlier videos, we buy and sell vintage clothing. 
And we have bought a handful of clothing items here to resell, but not a lot. Mostly because we're selling vintage and they pretty much stick to newer clothing here. But the games and electronics are tucked back in this back corner. Back by the furniture. So I'm going back there to take a look at the games. It's usually what I hit first. I'm most excited when I come to this desert because this is one of the better ones for games. Much better than that last one. See immediately a couple PlayStation games. I'm always excited to find those on the shelves at the thrift store. A couple of sports titles. A couple of kids games. And then a fat stack of PlayStation 2 games. I frequent these deserts enough that I'm kind of familiar with what was there last time and what's new. So I'm flipping through there. Mercenaries 2. Missing its disc. I would have had to look at that one anyways because I'm not always sure what is and what isn't already in my collection. I have a spreadsheet that I keep track of it that I check when I go to each store. If you're interested, a link to that spreadsheet is below the video. So give a click on that and you can kind of keep up with how fast my collection is growing. More PlayStation 2, 360 Connect games. Was that Family Feud? I don't know why I passed up on that. Must have had a high price tag. There's a lot of stuff here that I kind of wanted. Like I would have bought that Monkey Ball, but a lot of these games are new, so the prices are pretty high. What else? What else? <laughs> these electronics are so funny. Look how it's all just piled in there. I found the odd GameCube controller in here a time or two. You really got to dig for it, though. If you want any electronics from this store, you've got to work for it. So I'm on to the second row of video games. There's a lot of stuff here. I usually have pretty good luck finding GameCube games here. And I think that's probably what I'm hoping as I dig through here that I'll come across one. Would have loved to have had this one, but no manual. Not a rare game, so I'll wait till I find the manual. I only buy no manual games if there's something I'm really wanting to play or if there's something that is uncommon. But here's a bunch of PC games, but got to check them just in case they happen to be PlayStation games. I don't really collect PC games. Here is the lockboxes at this particular desert. They don't tend to keep gaming stuff in here, though. As you can see here, here's a bundled Wii. They tossed in there, but... Again, price too high. I think it was like 45 50 bucks, which is what you pay at the game store, so that's fine for someone that wants a Wii, but that's not what I'm in it for. I'm in it for whatever games would be in that bag. And it looked like it was only a bunch of Wii Sports. But here, I checked these PlayStation games before I left, which is a good thing because they were both just terrible. Look at that. I was really hyped on buying those, but probably for the best, because those two games were the most expensive. So, I ended up putting them back and not getting them. But I did leave with a handful of games. Here's what I left with. Board games, The Incredibles, Spongebob, and Sonic. Not a bad haul at all. Uh, later in the week, we went to the Goodwill Bins, which I've talked a lot about in my videos. It's where they just wheel stuff out, as you can see. Just tons of junk in these giant blue tables. And then you dig for it and you pay for it by weight. I spent a lot of time at the book and media bins, uh, which is up at the front of the store. And if you can stand to dig through all of this, you will find tons of gaming manuals and tons of video games. I usually leave with a fat stack of video games out of these bins, but you do have to work for it. Sometimes they pile these books up very high and you got to work for it. So here's a PlayStation 2 game. Pretty much found that in that manual right away. Not the worst find. If it's all there anyways. A lot of the games that will come in here, they'll be empty. Because this bins is where the leftover stuff comes. So if these discs were robbed at the regular Goodwill store, they just toss them in a bin and ship them here. So I'd say it's about a 50% success rate. About 50% of the games that come through here have no discs. And look at this. That sports game. Just had a Godfather manual for the original Xbox in it. I tend to pick that kind of thing up as well. I've got a growing, growing box of loose manuals, loose discs, stuff that I could use to complete games later on. Here I am still just finding games. That one's all there. Surprise, surprise. 
Then I go digging, and I keep finding Wii peripherals. I found a Wiimote. I found a couple nunchucks. I ended up finding the power supply. So what I'm doing is I'm hunting around for the actual Wii. And it's here somewhere. I just know it. Experience tells me that if I just keep looking, the Wii will present itself. But you just have to dig through so much junk to find it. Look at all this. I mean, what even is some of it? There's a microwave. There's a kid's bike. There's a... <laughs> that was a little piano. I think that's an air conditioning unit. Oh, the odd Pokemon card. I have a rather large collection of Pokemon cards. I mean, not the largest, but an acceptable number of Pokemon cards for a grown man to have. And I get most of them like that, just handfuls in these bins. Here I found some super old controllers. I don't even know what for. Are they for the Atari? Can't remember. But ended up one of them was pretty roughed up. I thought they were two separate controllers, but they're two controllers that go to one port. And so one of the cables was super frayed. Are you a Koopa or a Squirtle? <laughs> Ninja Turtle, obviously. <laughs> it's not a Ninja Turtle show. <laughs> is it that? That's what I thought it was. I didn't look at it. I think it's a Squirtle shell. <gasps> it is a Squirtle Oh, and it's homemade. It's amazing. You can sleep on it, too. <laughs> She's so ridiculous. The only thing more ridiculous than her is the ridiculous stuff you can find here sometimes. That was a homemade Squirtle shell. And what do we have here? That elusive Wii I was talking about. It's all there. It looks to be in pretty good shape. It's in good shape compared to a lot of the Wii's I find here. Not a lot of scratches. It's missing its door covers, but I have those at home. That's not a problem. I ended up checking it for a game off camera. I really should have filmed it because there was a copy of Wii Sports inside of it, which I'd say 8 out of 10 times Wii's found here at the bins have a copy of Wii Sports inside of it. Uh, but I have been lucky enough to find, I think the best thing I ever found inside of a Wii here was Super Smash Brawl several months back. And there's the power supply for it. And then I found a little gift for Hannah, something I thought she'd like. I got you a present. Is this a SpongeBob pillowcase? How do I know? <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> I guess she liked it. Here's a couple days later, I went to a Goodwill pretty close to the house on the way to somewhere else. They had a bin full of remote controls. And an Xbox. A Polaroid. Sometimes these Polaroids are alright for trading credit if you can get them low enough. Unable to test. Eight bucks. And that's actually about as good as a deal as you're going to get. Uh, Eight dollars with a little bit of a gamble. But I've got enough 360s. I didn't need it. Here is a Mobile Kings uh, game trigger joystick for a mobile phone. I've always wanted to try one. Not really something I plan on getting into, but for a dollar, that's definitely worth a try. I might just drop in and play around a Fortnite with the joysticks and get killed immediately and then never use them again. So on to the video games. There ended up being a lot here I already had. Mixed in with a lot of stuff that was in pretty rough condition. I took a look at this because it was in a cardboard sleeve instead of the regular case, which means it's a pack-in for something I'm unfamiliar with. And I thought about buying it anyways in case I get an inbox something or other that's missing that, but the price was pretty high for a game in a cardboard sleeve that I already had three copies of anyways. And then here we go. Permanent marker. Thank little Jimmy for that one. I mean, that could be easily fixed with a with a case swap but price tag was a little high and then over to the lockbox they've been locking up some games in here and I guess they're all games that they thought were really good ones because there's like a bunch of $10 games in here and even on half off day that means they're still 5 bucks which is more than I spend on games at a goodwill so not going to buy a lot from here but I figured I'd check and this is another day later I'm at a Zia Records and I don't think I ended up getting an outside shot of this place like I normally do because it was dark out. So I didn't even try. But I love coming here for the Skylanders. They have boxes full of them for as many as you can fit in a grab bag. I think it's five for the grab bag. You can usually fit six or seven in there. So that's less than a dollar a piece. I like that price all day long. I've raided this box several times. And it doesn't look refilled, so I didn't think there was going to be any in there that I didn't have, but I did end up finding a few, like this guy. 
here's the first inbox Skylander I ever saw when I started looking for them. And it's beautiful and I want it, but I'm not paying $15 for it. But luckily, if you caught it, there is that figure in the loose box. I ended up leaving with that guy in my grab bag. You always got to check the N64 games. Just make sure there's nothing new. There didn't turn out to be. These are all sports games. DS, Wii U. I tend to check every game in these bins because this is their markdown bins. And I'll always leave with most of the dollar games that are there. GameCube game, those don't show up in their bottom dollar bins much, but that one was still like six bucks and didn't have its manual, so I passed on that. And also, this was kind of funny. You see how those games are turned on their spine so you can easily see what they are? They've never been like that. And the moment I saw that, I was like, why aren't we doing this everywhere? So listen up. Media stores. Turn your games on their spine so I can look through them a hundred times faster. Here is their lockbox with their good stuff. Lots of good N64 games, Super Nintendo games. I don't end up buying much out of here. I buy the odd in-box Game Boy game out of here when they have good ones in there at a reasonable price. I mean, don't get me wrong. Zia has the best prices when you find what you want. Their prices are really good. But uh, I just I shop for the cheap ones. Here's the next Zia Records. Got a snapshot of it outside. This one is way across town. This is probably 45 minutes from my house. But what I ended up doing was the night before I went to Zia Records and I found some stuff... And so the next day I woke up and thought, well, I'm going to go to all the Zia Records since I found such great stuff. I love the Zia Records. They always have really affordable stuff, which I like, but all their stuff is always mixed in. Like that that I was just looking at, there's N64 games on the same rack that uh, Game Gear games are on. you got to move it all around just to see what stuff is in there and what prices. It makes it a little bit more of an adventure. Here's a lockbox where they keep the PlayStation 1 games. I'm heavily looking for a copy of Monster Rancher 2 for the PlayStation 1. And I have come across it once, but it was in deplorable condition, and I actually am looking to play it, so that was not going to do. Here's the bottom dollar box for the PlayStation 2 and 3. I ended up buying a handful of games out of this because there was quite a few titles that were a dollar and under. What happens a lot is there are different Zia records in town that heavily mark stuff down. I guess it's the busier stores, this being one of them. And then there are other stores that never mark anything down. It might just be management choosing when and what to do. I don't know. But this is one where they do mark stuff down. So I'm definitely digging through every game and apparently making a big mess. <laughs> That's because I've got a camera in one hand and I cannot multitask apparently. Jeez, equipment, you're dumb. Your big dumb hands are making a mess. All right, here I am acting normal again. Copy of Dual Masters there. I was pretty happy to find that. It's super shiny. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it's super shiny. If you can hear the sound of tape ripping in the background, just don't mind it. That's Hannah out in the hallway furiously trying to tape up some boxes to get them shipped out. Oh, and here's their not marked down stuff. Just running through the GameCube games real quick. There's another handful of titles that I might pay full price for if they're there. I'm looking for a copy of Luigi's Mansion, but if that were here, that would probably be in the lockbox. I don't know. You never know. Sometimes the employees writing up the prices and stuff don't know, and they get put elsewhere. Back to the Game Boys. See, as you can see, there's Game Boy games mixed in with the Game Gear games, and you just got to dig through there. I have been buying up any Game Gear game I can that's a couple dollars and under and stacking them up. That's a collection that I feel like I could reasonably complete. None of the games for it are terribly expensive. There's maybe one or two that are really expensive and the rest are pretty reasonable. So I've been buying up a bunch of those when I can. And then just looking through the rest of the store and here's why. Because here's a Skylander just in the middle of the store on the shelf. No idea why it's over there. But it is. He's only three bucks. He's in a little bit rough condition but I don't have any inbox Skylanders so I'm claiming him. Then I'm checking over at the toys, making sure there's no more Skylanders tucked in over here. What do I find? The most beautiful, beautiful box of X-Men still in box man. If you've watched any of my videos, if you look closely on my left, whenever you see me in my game room, I've got a shelf full of X-Men and Power Ranger toys. And I would love to add that box to them, but I'm trying to cut down on my toy collecting because I'm running out of room for games. I've been buying so many games, so... Not going to buy that today. 
Here's the next Zia Records. This is their lockbox. They have a lot of good stuff usually in their lockboxes. It's always worth a check. And here's their bottom dollar bid for N64 and Super Nintendo. I ended up buying a handful of games out of here because they were all a dollar. And I just figure it's best to get the silly stuff out of the way, all the sports games if you can for a dollar and under early. So most of my Super Nintendo collection at the moment is dollar sports games. Pretty much dollar sports games and Super Mario World, which is my favorite game of all time. Go check the PlayStation 2 games. There's plenty of them to go through. A lot of sports titles, a lot of karaoke. Nothing catching my attention yet. Also, you guys watching, if any of you are game enthusiasts and you happen to see something ever that I pass up, feel free to leave a comment below because... I'm always in too much of a hurry. Who knows what I'm missing. Here's Hannah trying to decide whether or not she is going to get this Switch game. Hannah really doesn't like spending lots of money on video games, so this is very difficult for her. Here's what I left with. Just a stack of Super Nintendo and N64 games. And then after dinner one night this week, we went to Zia Records, which this is almost literally right next door to my house, so we go here a quite a bit. Most of my videos probably have this Zia in it just because I go often to check what's new and it's a good thing I did tonight because I caught them as they were putting a bunch of great new stuff out. So here it is. See that Wii remote? Twelve ninety nine. that's pretty cheap for this Wiimote. And then look at this. Oh my god. I about lost my mind when that was there. And then look at the price. fourteen ninety nine. You never see these things less than I don't know, 30, 40 bucks if you're lucky, but pretty regularly 60 bucks if they're in great condition. I was so ecstatic. And then as since I saw that they definitely had put some new stuff out, I have to go back through all the bottom dollar bins here. So I'm checking out the PlayStation. Just praying for that copy of Monster Rancher. Checking the lock boxes. Here's where all the consoles are. You see that Power Ranger game? I want that bad. I'm just not paying that much for it. I've got a handful of Power Ranger handheld games in my collection. Just not that one. And I had that when I was a kid, too. Here's some more Skylanders inbox stuff. It's pretty cheap, but I'm not going to spring for it today. Especially since I just found $30 worth of controllers I had to have. Which is way more than I wanted to spend on this night, but I'm not leaving without those controllers. And then I got to thinking, well, wait a minute. What if there's more of that stuff tucked in there that I didn't see? So I handed the camera to Hannah and said, let me dig through all this stuff, make sure I'm not missing anything. There ended up being a pretty reasonably priced Wii U Pro Controller. Uh, but I've already got one. I don't really need a second one at the moment. So I passed on that. This N64 controller, at first glance, looks to be reasonably priced. But you look a little closer, it's aftermarket. So passed on that one, too. And here's a little lockbox right by the counter before you check out. And it's got a game in it. Don't know why. But it's yet another reason why you've always got to check around these stores. You have no idea why they're going to put what where. So that's it, guys. Back in the game room now. We're about to go through everything that I've gotten over the last week. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look like a whole lot more than what I usually get. It's definitely a handful of games more. But I probably only went to two or three extra shops more than I would go if I had just went on one day uh, that I had set aside just to go shopping. But let's jump right into it. I'm gonna start with, uh, let's start with the gaming manual. Pick this up at the Goodwill Bins. Ultimate Alliance 2, good timing too because Ultimate Alliance 3 just dropped. Uh, so maybe if I wanna play these old ones real quick, I've got some help. Next up, also from the Goodwill Bins, I got a Wii. That was kind of funny because I kept seeing Wii peripherals all around. Here's the power supply and two nunchucks. I kept finding this stuff and I just knew it. You can usually tell that means there's a Wii in one of the other bins. So I dug around and I found it. Now, it is missing its door covers, but that's all right because, because of my excessive shopping at the bins, I come away with a lot of extras. So all the Wiis I bring home, I can replace all the doors. There's one. There's number two. That's a complete Wii. Haven't tested it yet, 
but of the probably by now 50 Wii's that I've brought home, I've only had one bad one. And it was yellowed on the outside from basically cooking itself from the inside. Uh, so I really should have been able to tell that one was gonna be bad. Also from the bins, two Nerf clips and a racetrack. If you've watched a few of my earlier videos, you've heard me talk about this stuff. I resell Nerf guns, kind of funds this habit. And uh, I've got an upcoming project with these tracks. And that project is the sole reason you should subscribe to this channel. All right, let's do Skylanders next. I've got a bag full, a grab bag as they call it, at the uh, Zia Records that I bought it from. And then also from a different Zia Records, I got this still in box Skylander. It's my first and only still in box Skylander. It's pretty roughed up. You can kind of see here the crease. It's been bent up. It's even got some tape on it, but that's all right. I'm gonna put that on the shelf with the rest of my Skylanders. Funny enough, I think that guy is also in here unboxed. Yep, he's in there. But there's that guy, get another look at him. What's his name? Does it say his name on the box? Oh, here we go, Dive Clops. His name is Dive Clops. I see it now, he's in a diving suit. And he's a Cyclops. So creative. All right, there he is, out of box. I'm into that. It's pretty dope. Put him aside. And then I don't know what these are called. It's from one particular series. If you know anything about Skylanders and you're watching this, please feel free to school me on Skylanders. Uh, you can't see it because it's right on top of this black shelf right here, but that's where all my Skylanders are and I'm probably nearing about 200. Uh, here's some more peripheral type stuff. Some sort of trophy. I don't know what those do in game. I'm definitely gonna jump in and try Skylanders soon. <laughs> Amassing too large of a collection not to. Here's the next one. This dude, they all have awesome and funny names. All right. And then another dragon I didn't have. It's pretty cool. The dragons are probably among the cooler creatures in this game. Bunch of Spyro wannabes. Uh, one more peripheral trophy. Again, I don't know what these do. But I actually only bought these because you can get as many as you can fit in this bag for five bucks. So I just shoved all those little ones in here. This was the one I was really excited about. Right before I started collecting Skylanders, there was actually one of these in box, uh, and it's still there at the Zia Records that I bought these at. And I really wanted it, but I'm just not paying full price for stuff. I'm not paying, you know, 15 bucks, whatever it was, for it in box when I got it for pretty much less than a dollar out of box. I'll buy it when it comes up cheaper. But that guy was in box there and I always wanted him, but here he is out of box. He is my new favorite Skylander for sure. Super happy to have him. All right, next, I'm trying to get all the, the odd stuff out of the way. This isn't odd, but it's a copy of Hello Neighbors for the Switch. It is odd in that we just don't buy new games. As you can see, if you've watched any of my other videos that are like this, I get stuff dirt cheap. I go shopping in the bottom dollar bin. I don't buy games that are 20, 30 bucks. And this was, this. I think it was actually $17.99. And I think that's why we decided to buy it because everywhere else we've seen it, it's been 22 bucks, 23 bucks. And Hannah's really wanted to play it. And so we grabbed it. It really annoys me buying new games now that don't come with manuals. Never even was one. It's not just missing it. There never was one. That just, mm. oh yeah, there's a Pokemon card tucked in this one. Found that at the bins too. Uh, same day that I found this copy of Sims 2 Castaway. That's uh, game number one. We'll just run through the rest of the games now. 360 Connect Disneyland. Another Connect game that I didn't have. NFL 2K3 for the original Xbox. This case is in deplorable condition. We'll have to switch that out. I was really happy about this. I might actually plug this up and play it soon. Uh, that is Sonic Free Riders. Very happy to find that one. The Golden Compass for Wii. You know what? I think there's a, a new Netflix series, or it might not be Netflix, some other streaming service that is now making a series that's based off this, is, this uh, original source material that this movie was based off of. I don't know if it's called Golden Compass or not. I feel like it's called something else, the series. Uh, but yeah. And then next is Tech and Tag Tournament. It was really cheap. It was like a buck or two. So I just picked it up. Turns out I already had it, but that's a game that goes good for trade-in value. So I didn't waste any money. PlayStation 2 Ultimate Board Game Collection. You gotta love that. 
Next is SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Greatest hits, PlayStation 2. I've got a lot of SpongeBob games now. The Incredibles. I already had this game, but I didn't have the greatest hits. This was uh, like 75 cents, so picked that up. This I was very excited about, though. Yeah, it is missing its manual. No manual. But this is Yu-Gi-Oh! The Dawn of Destiny for the original Xbox. I will pick up any Yu-Gi-Oh! game I find. Here's uh, one of the only couple of Final Fantasy games I ever played. PlayStation 2 Greatest Hits, Final Fantasy X2. I played X and X2, 10 and 10-2, however you want to call it. Here we go. Here's another SpongeBob game I got. I got a little bit excited about this one because just prior to buying this one, I actually heard somebody mention this game as a rare one. Now they didn't, I don't remember what system that was, but I was just, I let a lot of gaming related videos play in the background as I do work in my shop and in my game room. And uh, I heard someone on a video say that one of the rare games of a certain collection was SpongeBob SquarePants Light Cam Lights Camera Pants. And uh, when I f found this, I thought, well, great, I found a rare game, but I've looked all over. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a greatest hit edition of that game for PlayStation 2 something, but maybe I just made it up. I don't know. If you do know, let me know in the comments below. Next, let's go with, here's another one I was happy to find. I had this for original Xbox, but I didn't have it for PlayStation 2. Enter the Matrix, and it's all there. This is in great shape. Ooh, my receipt's still in there. Very happy about that one. And then <laughs> we might have to do an episode of uh, Worstest Most Bestest for this one. Chan it's the, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> NPPL Championship Paintball 2009. Uh, we do a show where we play terrible games here on the channel. And we're gonna have to do that one. Uh, PlayStation 2, Buzz, the Mega Quiz. I had the, a couple of these peripheral controllers for these Buzz games. Never played any of them, but we can now. I've got one. PlayStation 2 Puzzle Challenge, crossword. I found these all in a bottom dollar bin, so I got most of them for less than a dollar. This one, I probably paid the most for this one, besides the Switch game, out of all of these. This was like four or five bucks. Dual Masters, it's uh, holographic. It looks like a giant Pokemon card, which is probably offensive to the makers of this game, because if I recall correctly, now correct me if you know in the comments if I'm wrong, this was a card game also. Yeah, they're playing cards on the back. I knew it. It came out, I guess, after Yu-Gi-Oh! Or at least it came to our attention after Yu-Gi-Oh! did. So we didn't end up playing that one. Jam Pack Summer 2003. This one was on the shelves for several weeks at a Goodwill. And uh, I didn't buy it. It just seemed like too much. I think it had like a $5 sticker on it. I found this one at Azia Records for a dollar or two and then another game that we're gonna have to do on our terrible game series for sure pimp my ride for the Wii. i can't imagine what that gameplay is like all right i've still got a few more let's go skylanders giants for the 3ds uh probably not the way i'm gonna end up playing the game because again correct me if i'm wrong but i'm assuming you there's a a, a, peripher a peripheral scanner for the 3ds or does the 3DS have built-in support for scanning things? I don't think it does, but... Uh, next, and last, and most certainly least, I have a stack of N64 and Super Nintendo games. These were all super bottom dollar. They were all a dollar a piece. And they were Fox Sports College Hoops 99. Super terrible. The next one is Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey. I might actually just have to try that. Just say I did. And then... This one's ridiculous. Brunswick World Tournament Championships. And it doesn't say bowling, but it has a bowling pin. So I'm assuming this should say Brunswick World Tournament of Champions Bowling. I don't know. Super Tennis, that might actually be fun. Of course, all it will probably do is make me want to turn this off and turn the Wii on and play Wii Sports Tennis. Vegas Stakes. Why would I want to play this when I can apparently go get on Grand Theft Auto now and gamble all my money away that's a thing if you don't know about it google it it's ridiculous uh this one has a mouthful title too skiing and snowboarding tommy moe's winter extreme surprise this is future tendo dropping back in on past tendo because apparently past tendo is a blubbering idiot 
that forgot to include the two best parts of this particular haul. Just want to remind you that I found that GameCube WaveBird controller with its dongle or receiver, if you want to call it, but I like dongle. And also that Wiimote. <sighs> I'm so stupid, but those were the best part. Forget anything I say about this is the best thing I found. The best thing I found was that WaveBird controller. And that's it. Let's count them real quick. Let's count the games. I'm not going to count the Skylanders. Let's just see how many games I came away with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. 27 games that's a big stack that is definitely a few more than my normal videos i don't know though what did you think if you've watched any of my other videos let me know if you thought it was better just watching me all in one day all in one go or compiling it through the week i'll probably do a little of both as time goes on this is definitely a little bit easier because i just keep my gopro in my pocket and film when i need to and then put it together later but I'm pretty happy with this haul. There's several games here I'm happy about having. I would say find of the week for me. Ooh, it's gonna have to be a tie this time. It's gonna be a tie between you and you. And actually, I might be able to pick a winner though. The ones I'm most happy about finding, a Yu-Gi-Oh game and a Duel Mo Masters game. If I called it Duel Monsters earlier, just go ahead and unsubscribe. I've brought dishonor to my dojo. Uh, I'm probably more happy about this one. The Duel Masters because it has its manual. Poor Yu-Gi-Oh doesn't. That's it, guys. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite item that I found this week was. And also make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. So that next time that I post a video like this, you get a notification and you can come and hang out with me then. And until then, guys, peace out. Hey, I'm a shark with a top hat. And I think you should subscribe. Go ahead. Hit the button. I'll wait. Okay, bye.